Hello and welcome back to Sew, Grow and Cook. It's the 2nd of February, Groundhog's Day in the United States and uh, I don't know if they celebrate that in Canada. Um, I was going to do a little video today on sowing some seeds for summer planting of um, chilies and peppers and eggplant or aubergines. Um, instead, I'm going to give you a little tour of what's still growing in the main polytunnel. The reason I'm doing this change of plan is we've got workmen working on our house at the moment and they're coming in and out and the doors are opening and closing. Um, the dogs are getting agitated and barking and I thought it would just be easier to work outside and not get in their way and they not get in mine so let's take a look at what i still have growing in the main polytunnel okay so remember <clears throat> we live in a maritime climate here in midwest wales and generally in the united kingdom so our winters don't get especially cold, although we do get frost and we do get snow in some places. Um, but on the whole, we don't have like permafrost all winter sort of thing. We have milder, gentler, wetter winters. So bearing that in mind, we can extend our growing season by growing cool weather crops in a polytunnel or even a cloche if you've got a good sturdy cloche to withstand some of the winds that we get around here and in this first uh, set of beds uh, facing the front or heading towards the front of the polytunnel I've got the usual suspects of kale different varieties of kale so we've got the Cavallonero sort and we've got the curly kale and some more cavallonero which I think has developed a little bit of rot probably because we've had quite a lot of damp mild weather and the condensation in here has been considerable and things do tend to go off especially brassicas older brassicas under those circumstances Nonetheless, I have harvested quite a lot and um, quite a lot of the leaves are quite good, so it's not too bad. Following along, I've got some spinach that I planted in September. Now, these winter over really well here in West Wales. Um, we had a couple of really hard frosts of minus seven centigrade which is, oh, I don't know, something in the 20s Fahrenheit. Um, and they drooped a little bit in the morning when I came in, but as the weather warmed up, they perked up again. So they're doing okay. And as the daylight hours increase, we're getting a lot more growth. So I can pick some of these bigger leaves from the outside and they'll carry on growing for several more weeks now. Hello Stella. Hello Pip. Come on then you two. Are you two behaving yourselves? Okay further along here we have got some bok choy which um, is beginning to look a little worse for wear. Some of it's beginning to bolt. Some of it's beginning to wilt. But I think there's still some usable bits. It's a different variety to the ones just across the way. Look at the difference here. A much stronger, happier bunch of bok choy. Um, and the amendments to the soil here were the same. So compost and 
uh, manure, well rotted manure, homemade compost. Um, I think the variety is a little bit different, so it could be that this is just a more vigorous sort. Now, bok choy is really good uh, in cold winter weather. It seems not to get affected too badly. Um, we're, we don't sort of use the zone system so much in the United Kingdom, but if we were following that zone system, we'd be sort of a zone eight, I think. However, our summers are not as warm as many places in zone eight in North America. <clears throat> But look at these. These are really lovely. I use them for stir fries and steamed vegetables, a lot of oriental cooking and things. Very tasty, very nutritious. While I'm showing you this, I'm also doing a little bit of surreptitious weeding. So there's a lot of chickweed and stuff that's growing in here. Pip, stop eating the Claytonia, for goodness sake. Speaking of which, I've got rather a lot of Claytonia or winter purslane growing. Now this is truly hardy. It never seems affected by cold weather or hard frosts. It looks very much like a, some sort of common weed of some sort, but it's very nutritious and tasty. It's very mild tasting. None of the uh, brassica spiciness, but great in a salad, a winter salad. I love it. It's really, really good. And just down from here is some arugula or rocket. Again, I need to do some weeding in here. The weeds have grown as well as anything else in this sheltered environment. Lots of grass. Okay. I love the peppery taste of the rocket. It's really good in a salad. It's got this very unusual sort of toasted taste. I don't know. That's the only way I can describe it. It's kind of spicy. It's kind of toasty tasting that's all i can say slightly bitter and if you notice here there is some self-seeded um claytonia or winter parsley purslane growing in here which is this stuff now i planted that but i did not plant this so this must have been in the homemade compost seeds from a previous year which seems to be the story of my life in this garden lots of volunteers are you still eating my greens will you leave it please further along from the bok choy we have got some red tatsoi very pretty isn't it Again, another oriental vegetable, oriental green in the brassica family. Fairly cold tolerant if you plant it in a polytunnel or in a, under a cloche of some sort. Very beautiful. Again, I use the leaves in salads or in stir fries. The colour is just stunning. It really cheers me up looking at that. I think one's going to be going to seed. And to the right of those is, I was led to believe, some lamb's lettuce. Now, this looks very different to the lamb's lettuce I'm used to. Nonetheless, we've been using it. It's cold tolerant again in the polytunnel. Pull these weeds out flavor and very good for you. Make a great winter salad with some of the spicier greens. Hello 
Stella, having a little snooze. Let me know in the comments section below if you still have things that you can winter over and what they are. Now, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, of course, it's probably <clears throat> late summer for you and you're probably up to your eyeballs in harvest. But if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, tell me where you live roughly and if you've got anything that can winter over or if you planted anything that you can harvest indoors like microgreens or fresh herbs and things. So there you have it, a little look at what's growing in the top polytunnel on our small holding. And I will be doing another video again on planting my peppers and chilies and aubergines um, and that'll come out soon. So keep a lookout for that. And once again, thank you for watching So Grow and Cook. Hope to see you soon. Bye for now.